Hey guys, Soka, welcome back to I, the Somnium Files. Let's carry on where we left off. We're all the way back here on day two. Mizuki Somnium sinking in the pain after our wholesome, happy ending last time with Date. We're back to this tragedy, all the way back to basically the beginning, the first initial branching point of the story. We're going to be exploring the second part of the cork ward after exploring the left side. Let's see if we can remember how to do this. Okay, here we are in the uh, <laughs> the room of destiny of sorts, this Agent voidish Dante, area. You've got five minutes. This is where all the uh, character development happens <laughs> with the other character endings. Now, the first time I came here, we went for the right bird cage initially, but then the game told me about retries and we ended up going towards the left bird cage instead. So, I suppose we should explore what could have been the first half of this LP. Blown up rubbers inside. Br blown up rubbers. There is also a deflated rubber on the floor. If I remember correctly, Date Could wasn't. Please not yeah, call it a rubber. Wasn't too happy with her choice of words. You can say balloon. I do not understand. It is clearly rubber. Please. Yes, but us humans call it balloons, and well, we know how Date's mindset works. This is the guy who yells out "porno mag" in the middle of a siege, <laughs> All right? So maybe calling it a rubber might. Distract him a little bit. Anyway, I think we lifted this up. This'll be easy. Here we go. Glad to hear it. <laughs> that that reminds me of like when you're arm wrestling someone and they pretend to struggle and they're like, oh no, you're gonna defeat me, and then they all of a sudden they just slam your hand on the table. What? But it was so heavy. Yeah, you almost had me convinced, Iba, but you managed to tip it over. Uh, no problem. Here we go. We're going down the right path. Now, anything could happen now, I feel, because we've gone so far back that even Renju is still alive at this point. It's entirely possible he doesn't even die on this side of things. But nothing happened. Oh? What is this? I feel like we're going to get more Iris on this side because, uh, of course, she ended up getting her eye taken out about two-thirds of the way through the other routes. So here... It's possible she doesn't even get captured by a polar bear whatsoever. A deflated balloon. Deflated balloon. A deflated rubber. A deflated balloon, Iba. I told you, please <laughs> call it a balloon. What are you getting so worked up about? I've already told you, but that's okay. Uh, let's blow it up, I think. Or should we try eating it? Let's, let's eat it first. Might as well use our one-fifth. Got another one. What? Yeah, you can put it in your mouth, chew it, and then blow it up like bubblegum. I mean, we've got plenty of time, right? I could blow it up normally. Then again, we kind of uh, cut it close with Date Somnium last time. Ended up going over time. She's refused my order. What the heck? Iba, you do what I tell you to do. It's a deflated balloon. Thank you. There we go. Uh, yeah, blow it up, please. Understood. At your request. Ooh-wee, that's a big balloon. It's huge. I wish your boobs were that big. <laughs> oh gosh. See, this is why you don't call it a rubber. Are you serious? Those are obscenely large for a human. They are, but you are not a human. So there's that. Well, I suppose I am not technically human. There you are. So... Date, please! Be quiet! <laughs> there it goes. Ascend. Ah! And there goes the cage. Bound to hit some satellite. If you were able to get out. Satellites exist in Somnium. Perhaps the balloon was the key. I think so. I remember now. A story I heard from Mizuki a while back. One time, when Mizuki was just a little girl, Shoko bought her a balloon. It was one of those nice helium ones. But the string slipped through her hand. The balloon sailed up into the sky. Shoko snapped. She scolded Mizuki for hours. Oh, come on! Like, that is a rite of passage for kids, basically. Everyone lets slip a helium balloon and it floats up into the sky, never to be seen again. <laughs> like... It always happens. Maybe that's why. Mizuki put the balloons inside the birdcage. That way, they could never fly again. But I guess Iba and I made her relive a painful memory. 
All right. She probably now didn't want to get in trouble again. Get do you not see the horses spinning at hurricane speeds? I do. I also see the other horses dancing on the skewers. If you stop time, you can go in, right? But I cannot stop time while I'm moving. Oh, right. <laughs> Guess we gotta figure out how to stop it from spinning. Hmm. Alright, we've got the panda head. If I remember correctly, we used the parasol last time, but let's have a look at this panda head. Let's see what we've got going on. Beep. The panda is floating. Wear, slap down, kick away. You know we gotta wear it. We oh. always gotta wear it. Wear it? Like this? <laughs> that looks creepy. Oh. She's suspended. How are you doing that? Reminds me of it. Unknown. <laughs> I guess that was a waste of time. Uh, you never know. It was kind of fun though. Exactly. You know, we need to we need to relieve stress now and then. Okay. Um The panda is floating. Let's try kicking it away. 30 seconds. Oh. All right. Well, okay. I thought you were going to kick it, you know, to the side, not up in the air. It's moving! There it goes! This? Uh, Mizuki? I think Mizuki took off in a UFO. Merry-go-rounds can fly? They can now! Date, over there! We're sending everything to the balloon. Uh, with the balloon and the cage into the sky. Is Mizuki in the column still? Whoa, what the hell is that? Iris. Iris? Wait, what? Why? Hang on, wait, 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 sorry, sorry. I need to I need to refamiliarize myself with the flowchart. Where are we? We're here. Okay, we've already met Hitomi. Sinking in the brain, that was uh Date's initial summium. Okay. Sorry, I needed to be uh I I forgot when we met. Iris, and I was like, whoa, what? How does he know that's Iris? Oh my god, what the hell is that? Why is Iris... She's naked and she's got she scars on the back. Her hair is down. What the hell is going on? Underneath the merry-go-round? <coughs> Mizuki? What is this? What is happening? Shut up, shut up, shut up! Shoko? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Why do you never keep quiet? Is this fun for you? Giving your mother a hard time? Okay, we're already aware of Shoko's borderline, well, not borderline, it is abuse of her daughter. So this doesn't come as a surprise. That her yelling hurts. at her. That hurts! Please stop! I'm sorry! Why are you here? I'm sorry! I'm sorry! And this is before Mizuki probably knew her own strength. If you weren't here, everything would be fine! I think it's also just discom discomforting because, you know, you expect mothers to be nurturing and caring to their daughters. Yeah, I know, like, it's more common for, you know, dads to be aggressive and whatnot to their children. But when when mothers do it, it's just, ugh, it goes against nature. You're supposed to care for your children, look after them, raise them. And here, she's just hurting Mizuki and it's, ugh. Apologizing means nothing! It's hard to fathom. I mean, I know, obviously, mothers can and do abuse kids in, in real life, but, you know, it, ugh. Say something! Don't make me into the bad guy! You're doing a perfectly good job of that on your own. Please. What's that look, huh? And what is all this stuff here? Ow! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! It's all your fault. You! You! I wish you had never been born! <laughs> Mizuki's voice. The other voice is likely... Well, I'm so glad that Date came to the rescue and pawned Mizuki off her parents. And that just makes the, uh, the her ending all the more heartwarming, you know? She ran to Date, and even though Date pushed her away, he eventually accepted her because she wouldn't give up. <sighs> Still makes me happy to this day. But now here we are. Damn. What's going on here? Date should know. You, you spoke with Shoko uh, at Marble. Same with Renju. Before all this happened. Iba, look out! What? Is it coming back down? It certainly is. And now... 
I was about to become a pancake. Yeah, well, Iris is an Iris sandwich now. Good thing this isn't a bed and breakfast. <sighs> that frozen Iris does intrigue me. But Mizuki first. Let's get to Mizuki while the merry-go-round is stopped. Goodness me, we're already, like, we're already hooked. We've already got the bait of what this uh, entire half of the LP is going to be like. You've got four minutes. That's plenty of time, Pewter. Mizuki, hey. It's Mizuki. Back when she wasn't even speaking, giving us lip. Uh, what did we do? I think we spoke kindly last time. Should we try something else? Uh, encourage? But why? It's motivational. A lot of companies do it. Yeah, corporate culture, you know. I suppose I will give it a try. Hey! Stop Jesus. moping around! Stand up and get out here! That's not encouraging, that's terrifying! You're supposed to give her like some yeah, sort of acronym that uh, everyone can relate to. I don't think it works for those companies either. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe right. But hey, they feel good about it, and they look like they're treating their employees okay. It's Mizuki. I think it is speak kindly, but let's keep going. Let's try giving her a present. A gift? Yes. Oh, that might work. Not the panda head. What did you get? Um. Mizuki, now you can have a taste of the merry-go-round every day of your life. I but we're not trying to scare her to wake up, okay? It will also improve your health. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's your gift? Uh, it's Mizuki. Yeah, I think we just speak kindly. How about that? There we go, yes. Mizuki, can you hear me? I should have done break glass, but it's alright. We will protect you, Mizuki. You know we will. We will always be there for you. So, it's all right now. Hey, do you think we can use that speaker? Speaker? Maybe she needs to hear her mother's voice. Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. I think that's the last thing she wants to hear. She's doing her Terminator act. Maybe that's what she wants to hear. So glad that you were born. So, so glad. I mean, she was always speak, uh, seeking approval from her mother, and it seems to be working. The tears have stopped. Hey, do you hear something? Is that a phone? Is that... A phone ringing? Where... Where's it coming from? Date, don't! You can't stay any longer! Oh no, we're doing it again. Pull out, Date! Before we get reprimanded by boss again. Interlock 3. Done. Okay, this was wildly different from the other one, wasn't it? Okay. Done with three minutes to spare. Less some. Alright, what the hell is the deal with Iris? Under the merry-go-round. Day two, Saturday, Keitai. What is her involvement in all this? She is... everywhere. In everyone's somniums, it seems. Playing different parts. Are you okay? Zuki? Zuki. Oh no, she's still mute. Is she? She hasn't been healed. She's still traumatized. I had to guess it's because we used Shoko's voice. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> He's just like, oh my god, guys. Seriously? Hmm. Oh no, we're not going to get attitude from her. Iba, call Iris' phone. It's urgent. Why the rush? Please, just call. Alright, get her on the phone. Hello? Hello. This is Kaname Tate from the MPD. I met you earlier today. Oh, Tate! That's me. Is 
something wrong? Earlier today we met her. Okay, there we go. Sorry, just needed to refamiliarize myself with the timeline. A lot's happened since then. Where are you right now? Um, I'm at home. Okay, don't go anywhere. Lock the door and stay at home. Can you tell me why? Um, I'm politely requesting as a police officer. Who cares why? This is a direct order from the police. Yeah. <laughs> you mean a personal order? Oh, come on, Iba. Okay, she doesn't need to know it's a personal order. This is for her own safety. Okay, but if I do, will you play Shovel Forge with me tomorrow? <sighs> Man, it's always a deal with her. Fine, I'll play Shovel Forge. No. Oh, okay. Date's not negotiating. <laughs> Shovel Forge it is. A date? <laughs> if you promise me we'll go on a date, I'll stay home and not say a peep. Date? If you don't promise me, then... I'll wander around the city dragging a heavy suitcase. <laughs> He's not amused. <sighs> Alright. Understood. Oh, so the date is what got him. Understood? <laughs> I was also not impressed. Great. I think we need to get uh, Date on a negotiation class of some sort. Fine. Just don't go outside, okay? Just stay indoors, okay? Lock the door. Stay under the bed covers if you have to. If anything happens, call me immediately. My number is... I have it in my history. See ya! Okay. Cool. Sorted. What was that? A phone call? No, I was just um, talking the case out loud to myself. Boss, you know I'm doing a phone call. It's nothing. Where's Pewter? He's gonna shake his head again at us. <laughs> okay, so Mizuki is still mute. Perhaps this is why we get closer with Iris, because she's going to be assisting us more than Mizuki will. Which is entirely possible. I just hope Mizuki stays safe in this line of uh, the flowchart. Okay, well, let's explore everything first before we start initiating conversations. A CRT monitor. Today is Saturday. No reaction drama should be broadcasting soon. First, no, it won't. Second, that's not even a TV. <laughs> Date, putting his foot down. Iba, shouldn't you be able to stream it anyways? I open the binder. There are pictures of macho-looking men in loincloths and roses in their mouths. Okay. <laughs> a long table. This brings me back. Date and I used to make love on this table. Oh gosh, she said that before, hasn't she? We did not! We just poured salmon roe and seaweed salad all over each other. Yes. Totally different. That sounds even more kinky. Well, there's only room for two people on this table, Pewter, I'm afraid. You're gonna have to, you know, take a ticket and choose whether you want to do it with Boss or me. A locker. Hey, Date, remember that time you were blackout drunk? How am I supposed to remember that? You thought that locker was a urinal? Oh, is that why it speaks to me in a creepy voice? Please don't remind me. All right, where do we begin? Do we begin with Mute Mizuki? I couldn't help Mizuki get her voice back. She's sitting on the chair. She looks drained, like an abandoned doll. Are you okay? She didn't answer. I don't think we're gonna get anything from her about the Nile message. Mizuki, I have to ask you. You got a Nile message yesterday, and then you went to Bloom Park. Who sent you the message? I checked her phone, but the history was white. I am trying to identify the sender now, but it will take some time. Okay. Keep working on it. I mean, we already know what the answer is. <laughs> About the ice pick. Mizuki. When we found you at the merry-go-round, you were holding the ice pick. I'm not accusing you of anything. She'd found the weapon, right? I trust you. I just want to know why you were holding it. Answer me, Mizuki. Date, you know that's not gonna work. Date, please. Yelling at her is counterproductive. I know, I know. I think Date's just frustrated he couldn't heal her. Damn it. I mean, uh, let's speak with the others first before we conclude our interrogation of Mizuki. Uh, about Samyam. In a normal dream, the person experiencing the dream cannot remove themselves from it. Dreams are first-person experiences. Mm. However, the circumstances are slightly different during a sink. 
The sinker dives into the subject's mind and experiences their subconscious thoughts. But this dream is experienced as an observer, as though you were watching a play. So this dialogue is familiar. I think we experienced it last time. The subject is the author, director, and actor. The sinker is merely the audience. Nice uh, bit of refreshing, refreshing the information we've got in our minds about prophetic dreams. Ah, the corpse you saw in Somnium. You're wondering if that was some kind of vision of the future. Not possible, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, let's see. <clears throat> As a man of science, I don't believe in such things. Well, I mean, we've got Mizuki able to basically punch a hole through several brick walls. Prophecies and the like. However, Who if knows what's it possible? was a prophecy, I would suggest the girl wear some kind of metal plate. Thank you for uh, the suggestion. I think you may have saved a life with that, Pewter. Huh? You saw her. She was stabbed countless times in the back. Is that uh, a metaphorical suggestion? Or literally, she got stabbed in the back a lot. Tortured. As a kid. Wait, no, she's missing her eye in that vision. Hang on. Rewind. Replay. Yeah. She could have used some stab-proof armor or something. Hmm. That is her right eye. <laughs> Just indulging in the fantasy of real-life prophecies. <laughs> of course you are, Pewter, you psycho. <laughs> Don't mind me. Anyway, prophecies are simply not possible. True. You see? Okay, well that's cleared up. About the ringtone I heard Insomnia. That wasn't your phone, was it? I know about the ringtone you heard, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Did Mizuki actually hear that? Or was it just a dream? Or her imagination? Normally when that kind of sound enters your dreams, it's typically happening in real life like, as you're sleeping. That's what I'm trying to find out. Can you analyze the sound or something? Unfortunately not. <laughs> I mean, it's a rather generic ringtone, isn't it? Peter is standing with his hands in his pockets about what I saw in Somnium. No need to report specifics. We saw it all from here in the control room. What the sinker sees in Somnium is projected here, remember? Mm -hmm. We've got it all recorded. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? I invented it. Of course it would be incredible. So we know about everything you saw. Not the to phone, mention Iba records it. frozen corpse. Do you believe in prophetic dreams? Where is this coming from? Oh, I see. This is about the body you saw in Mizuki Samyum. Yep, and currently she's alive and well, and both her eyes are firmly placed in their sockets. Her name is Iris Sagan, the girl you went to Bloom Park with today. How do you know that? Iba told me. It is one of my duties to deliver regular investigation reports. Man can't get away with anything around here. I but you're supposed to report to me. You're supposed to be my buddy. Don't snitch on me, please. If we do anything, like, you know, go after the shrine gift box. About Mizuki's Aphonia. It didn't go well. Not but this it's time. it's not all bad. The sink wasn't a total waste of time. We found clues. Clues? Right. Clues are good. About prophetic dreams again. Prophecies, huh? That's why you called Iris. But, Date, come on. I know. A dream is just a dream. Just wanted your thoughts on it, that's all. Doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reality. But still, I just have this gut feeling. Date, are you alright? Hmm... Maybe it's because we've seen her actually die. We've also seen her come close to dying. And numerous other possibilities. Perhaps the sink is causing negative side effects. I hope that's all it is. Still, she wasn't naked in the other times she got killed. She was sold in half, actually. 
about the ringtone I heard in Somnium. Wasn't your boss, phone, was it, boss? I heard a ringtone in Mizuki's Somnium. I know. But I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Yeah. I don't even know if it's real or something Mizuki invented. But if Mizuki really did hear that ringtone... It's quite curious that we're hung up over this ringtone. Heh, <laughs> hung up, get it? <laughs> Sorry. Then there must have been a phone somewhere on site. Did CSI report anything like that? No, nothing. Oh, bloody hell. What is Kagami good for if he's not going to be reporting on cell phones potentially found at the crime scene? They searched the site, but didn't find a single thing. So this is why he's just not memorable in terms of his name. I always forget. He hasn't made a name for himself. Boss is watching Mizuki with a compassionate gaze. All right, let's finish off about Iris's body. Mizuki, I saw something strange in your dream. Iris, she was frozen. And why is it in Mizuki's Somnium, you know? She was dead. What was that? Tell me, Mizuki, please. What has she seen? Date, there is no point attempting to speak with her. I know, but I suppose we're just, uh, expositing what kind of questions we need to answer on this side of the corkboard. Why is Iris's body underneath the merry-go-round? Whose ringtone was that? And basically who the killer is, of course, which is common across both of them. Mizuki's aphonia has not healed. About the ringtone I heard in Somnium. Hey Mizuki, tell me something. In your dream world, I heard a phone ring. Did you like hear her, that somewhere? I like how he's still saying, Mizuki, tell me something, like she's still gonna talk. Or did you just imagine it? Date, there's no point talking to her. You couldn't heal her. Her symptoms haven't improved. Hmm. She'll be sent back to the hospital. Maybe the doctors can help her. Hopefully. I'm gonna miss our banter, Mizuki. Mizuki. Summarize for me. I think I'll go to Bloom Park again. Looking for the phone? It might be there, it might not. I just want to be sure. Take care of Mizuki, okay? Please? Yeah, leave it to me. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do much for her this go-around. Bloom Park it is. Pewter, see you later. Behave yourself. Make sure you fix anything that needs fixing. Ooh, a nighttime drive. Charging, Iba. Now the news. Yesterday night, the body of Shoko Nadami was found. Her body was recovered from the now-defunct Bloom Park in the Kawasaki District. Autopsy reports revealed that her time of death was roughly 5 p.m. last afternoon. Police have determined that the victim was killed elsewhere and then brought to Bloom Park to be put on display. I don't think we ever determined where she was killed, did we? The MPD has expanded the scope of their investigation and are encouraging anyone with any information to come forward. In other news, at 6.10 p.m. today, on the outer circle of the Capital City Highway in Minato District, Tokyo. That's a very specific place. <laughs> a traffic collision occurred involving five cars and at least one truck. As a result of the pileup, one man was sent to the hospital unconscious in critical condition. Wow, only one person? Six other individuals were treated for minor injuries. MPD has arrested the driver of the truck suspected to be the cause of the accident for negligence. The investigation is ongoing. Okay, I wonder if that's relevant. Somehow. Surely. Why would they bring it up? Let's not crash into the pileup, I suppose. Bloom Park, Saturday, 8.13pm. Eerie. Okay, what do we have? Last night, Mizuki was found in that column. Why was she in there? Alright, Aiba, hit me. <laughs> Warn her, scream shrilly, scream boldly. Who are you? Scream shrilly. <laughs> Wait, are you a ghost? Idiot. It's me. Oh. Are you dead? Who are you? Me? It's me. 
Me? Is that your name? Whom? I said me. But are you a ghost? I'm not a ghost. Then Iba? <laughs> but why? I just thought I would project myself. You seem lonely. Right, well, I don't need to get haunted at this dark, creepy-ass amusement park, okay? How are you doing this? It's not even an amusement park, it's a merry-go-round, for goodness sake. I am overlaying the image your left eye processes with augmented reality. You can't see me through your right eye, only your left. You can't just pop into my eyeball without permission. <laughs> you do realize I do that all the time, right? Well, we're gonna need to set some new ground rules, okay? How do you appear insomnia? I am connected to your brain via artificial nerve. I am part of your working brain. Our minds are one. Well, well, well. During the sync, when the data that constitutes your ego is transferred... Ego? Some of my main programming is also transferred. Surprised you could fit in with my ego. That is why I appear insomnia. Do I even need to explain this sort of thing to you? I mean, no, not really. We already know about that, but you know, just in case. I have experienced sinking many times with you. Although it is true that I have never appeared to you in this form. Jeez, taking liberties with your abilities now. About your appearance. Come to think of it, you look kind of like you do when you're insomnia. What's that about? What do you mean? Well, you don't usually look like that. You have a somnium form and another form. Oh, this? Yes. Your tiny, cute version. Yes, that. I mean, both of you are cute, but this one's the little, cute, adorable one. Why are you doing this now? I was bored last night, so... Huh? I thought you would like it. Why would I like it? Yeah. You haven't even blown your boobs up to be the same size as that balloon. Come on. Well, I did attempt to shape myself to your preference. Again, the balloon. Not the rubber, by the way. The balloon. If you could do that, change it. <laughs> be Reka from Teeth Blau. <laughs> I will not. Why not? Because I won't. We don't have the copyright for it. About the ringtone heard insomnia. It was somewhere around here, right? Where I heard the phone ring. Affirmative. The source can't be far. The phone must be nearby. I do not know if it actually exists. Is it Ota's phone that dropped in the mud? Dreams consist of memories. But then again, it wouldn't be working, right? But that does not mean that they perfectly mirror reality. In fact, it is more common that what occurs in dreams is distorted. Mm -hmm. For example, the events witnessed in the last Somnium were absurd, exaggerated, or otherwise warped. I remember I had a dream, I think the other night, where I was in my, my work office and all the lighting was wrong, like everything was dark. And I joked in the dream, I was like, <laughs> this is what the office looks like in my dreams. And then everyone in my dream laughed. And I should have realized that I was in a freaking dream. Uh, honestly, they're so bizarre, but... I mean, they're, they're entertaining. They're also kind of inspiring. Give you funny ideas now and then. Clearly, they do not represent exactly what happened in reality. I wish I could, like, interpret them properly. I, I don't know if there's anything to interpret. I mean, I, I know a lot of people, you know, look for symbolism in their dreams, but... Hmm. The ringtone as well. Mizuki didn't necessarily hear it. I understand that. But it's our only lead. We have to look. I mean, we've got nothing to lose, right? It's a horse from the merry-go-round. Nice. Anything catch your eye? As I mentioned earlier, I cannot say for certain if there was a phone here. However, if there is, it must be well hidden. Well hidden? CSI has already searched the area thoroughly. Again, I mean, Kagami has his hat over his eyes. I'm surprised the guy knows how to freaking walk in a straight line at this point. But they did not discover anything. Well hidden, huh? Maybe a place you can't see with the naked eye. We've got x-ray vision. Do you see anywhere suspicious? Let me see. I need to analyze the surroundings. Well, do it. X-ray the horse. Mysterious object. Look at there that. You go. It appears to be a smartphone. I knew it was in the horse. Don't lie. You doubted me. I did not. So how do I get it out? I cannot find any weaknesses or seams in the horse's body. Well, then how did it get in there? The horse's neck does not detach either. There must be some hole or something. Yeah, in the horse. Preferably not its backside. I found one. Where? 
the mouth of the horse. Okay. I might be able to fit inside. Go on. One moment. Hmm. This isn't in the mud. I got it! Well done. Now give it to me. Yes. Good job, Iba. Whose is it? It's been added to the clue list. Iba, who owned this phone? The number is... I told Iba the number. The results came back quickly. This is a rental phone. A rental? Who rents a phone? What the heck? The owner is unknown. It is registered under a false identity. Okay. Renting a phone. That's new. I mean, maybe it's a, maybe it's common. Maybe it's not. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Come on. Date, look at the device history. It's gone. No outgoing call history. What about incoming? What about the incoming history? Only one call. 9.02 p.m. yesterday. Okay, that was when we came to investigate, right? Mizuki and Ota discovered the corpse at approximately 9 p.m. All right, of course. That's when they discovered Mizuki it. Mizuki must have heard this phone. That would connect to what we experienced in Somnium. Who is the caller? Their name isn't displayed. The number isn't in their contacts. In fact, there are no contacts. It's a rental phone, after all. No numbers at all. The phone had no email addresses or browsing history that could be a clue either. Just the one clue. The call at 9.02 p.m. I had Iba look up the number. This number is also from a rental phone. What? No owner is registered. Hmm. Don't fall. It's alright. Do not worry about me. You're my eye. I have to worry about you, okay? Otherwise I have to be winking for the rest of my life. I'm not worried about you. I just don't want to get dirt in my eye socket. <laughs> <laughs> well done, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. See, I can compliment you. This look suits you. How disrespectful. Do you know how hard it was to make that form? No. <laughs> by the way. Do not worry about me. Finish your search and investigation. You should find some clues. Okay. Let's look at it again. Oh. What happened? The battery died. The screen turned off. Well, we can always charge it, right? Hmm. I'm glad we found this, though. Call the number I just gave you. Iva, remember the number I just gave you? See if we get, like, a voicemail message or something. Of course. Call it. It connected. It connected. Uh... Pizza? My name is Konami Date. I'm with the Metropolitan Police Department. Oh, I forgot we have to identify ourselves. Are you an idiot? <laughs> They hung up. <laughs> oh, you think so? What kind of low IQ ignoramus calls a suspicious number and says they are from the police? I'm, I'm just trying to be an honest cop. I get you report my activities to boss all the time. See, this is what happens. I wanted to be the rogue cop, but you know, you never let me. And now when I don't do it, you tell me and lecture me off. I couldn't help it. <sighs> Gosh. I wasn't ready. I, I just said the first thing that came into my head. You told me to call. <laughs> I didn't think it would work. Disappointing. There is no other word for it. I mean, geez, sorry I don't plan far ahead. You're telling me. <laughs> well, we tried. Can you call it again? Oh. Iba, can you call it again? I'll be ready this time, I swear. Are you sure? <laughs> Are they even gonna answer? They're just gonna see us from the same phone, unless you spoof the number. Yeah, trust me. What if it's like Sosajima or something? I'll the connect it again. The number you have dialed is no longer in service. Okay, never mind. Damn, call deny. Call deny? Yeah, call denied. Oh, the thing Reika from the Cabaret Club did to your number. <sighs> I mean, fine. Damn, you remember that? God, Reika. Seriously. Just the bane of my existence. What cell tower did that call connect to? Near 3rd Street, Shinjuku. That's a wide range. Can you tell if they called from a smartphone? They did. It's not one of the Kumakuras, is it? I can or tell from the number. Does it have GPS? The phone is likely capable of that function, but it has been disabled. The power also appears to be off. 
I cannot connect from any line because you blew it. Oh, jeez. Blame me. <sighs> Why didn't you think of anything? Call Rika. What? Why? I want to see if I'm still call denied. I want to hear her voice. She put you on call deny. Can't you try from another line? I can, but I won't. Why? Use a payphone if you want to call her. Fine. I know there's one nearby. Jeez. I don't have my own phone. As long as I'm within range, I can use Iba to make any call I need to. Whether it's a traditional line or a now message, I can have Iba help me. Iba's connected to my mind wirelessly as well. So even when she's outside of my eye socket, I can talk normally. Who is the person we called? Probably someone involved in the incident. They hung up as soon as they heard you mention the police, then refused further incoming calls. I mean, I'm sure we don't have to identify ourselves as the police. We should have, like, gone for the pizza line, or even just not said anything and just been like... <sighs> deep, deep breaths. That behavior is at the very least suspicious. Hmm. What was the phone and the horse? Unknown, but it does appear to be deliberate. Did the culprit do this, or did someone else? Yeah, that is strange. And for what specific purpose? I never understand why, um, I mean, I can kind of understand, but, you know, when people discard the murder weapon near the crime scene, like, I understand if you're caught wandering around with the murder weapon that you're obviously guilty as shit, but, uh, surely you've got a specific time window where you can leave the scene. If you've got time to leave the scene, you've got time to carry the murder weapon with you, unless, of course, it's something bulky like a big shovel or something, and then just dispose of it at a later date, like, on the other side of town or something. So if they we're trying to get rid of the smartphone, why leave it at the scene of the crime? You know what I mean? Anyway, we don't know what the specifics are of the cell phone just yet. Or maybe we do, and I'm just... I've forgotten. <laughs> Should we go to Shinjuku? There would be no point to that now. It's a wide range. We've got no idea where specifically the call went to. The recipient is alerted to our presence and likely on the move. Right. <sighs> well, let's go then. Aiba, let's get going. There's nothing more here. Where are we going? To Iris's house. Iris's house? Yeah. It's late at night, though. I'm curious. About your prophecy? Mm. Absurd. It was nothing. We should probably... I mean, I don't know how we're going to phrase it. Iris, do you mind uh, just lifting the back of your jacket? I just want to check your back out a little bit. Let's hope so. Then again, if she does have scars, she should let us. If she doesn't have scars, well, she's going to think we're a creep. But we can play it off as just being part of the date that we promised would go on. Sagan residence awaits us.